Hi friends, Mickey Mank is here and welcome to Out the Back Door. Today I'm going to be making liquid gold, also known as ghee or clarified butter. Join me. You may be wondering what ghee really is. It is like a clarified butter. What we're going to be doing is removing all of the milk solids from it. So all we have left is pure fat. Ghee is shelf stable for an indefinite time. So it really works nice for you preppers out there. Um, most people do use an unsalted butter like I've got right here when they're making ghee. I'm actually going to be making um, ghee out of both salted and unsalted. Anywhere that you would use butter, you can use the ghee. And the nice thing about it is it's got a high smoke temp to it, so you can use it for frying also. Where regular butter would burn really quickly as soon as you start bringing up the temperature on it. So I've got both unsalted and salted butter here that I'm going to mix. You may have noticed that in some of my other videos, I'm stressing on buying things when they're on sale, when produce is in season. Um, I get meat when it's on sale from the local butcher besides us going out and harvesting our own. But butter, that's another thing. When I see it on sale for like $1.99 a pound, um, I usually grab it and I'll pick up maybe five or six pounds of it and I store it in my freezer until I'm ready to work with it. Well, I've got enough in the freezer now and I need to clean the freezer out, so I'm going to be making ghee today. Now, depending on how much ghee you plan on making, uh, the butter that you're going to melt down is going to determine how big of a pot that you're going to need. Now, you do want it a little bit larger than um, the amount of butter that you're going to put in to melt because it will start foaming up a bit when it first starts cooking. Another thing, you want to make sure that you've got a very heavy bottom um, pot that you're going to be using because this is going to help so that you're not burning it. We are going to be doing this initially um, on a medium temperature to start bringing it up to a cooking boil and then after that we're going to reduce it down to low and that's all we're going to have it on. We're not going to go any higher than that because we don't want burnt ghee. You want to make sure that you have all of your supplies ready to go. I'm going to be using half pint jars to put my ghee into, but I've got my big stock pot out that's heavy duty on the bottom, and that's what I'm going to be using because I have quite a few pounds of butter I'm going to be melting down to make ghee. The first thing that you're going to want to do is start unwrapping all of your butter and getting it into your pan. I may be able to get two sticks of butter in each half pint jar. I did wash up, I believe, four cases just to make sure that I had enough jars ready to go. So anyway, and my lids and everything, um, I'm using the regular flats that came off of the brand new cases that I had just bought. And I did wash them and dry them off. I have my jars in the oven right now, and once I get all of my butter in my pan, then I'm gonna turn my oven on in order to heat up my jars for two different reasons. One, I wanna make sure that they are completely dry, and two, this, this is gonna be sterilizing them. So I'll be running my um, oven at 225 degrees Fahrenheit and, um, for at least 20 minutes. But I'm not gonna waste the time on that right now. I need to get my butter into the stock pot right now. Okay, I've got all of my butter unwrapped and into my stock pot right now, and now I'm gonna get it onto the stove top. All right, I've got the flame underneath here. I turned it on to about number four, and I'm going to let this all melt down. So once it starts bubbling, then I'm gonna reduce my heat down to the lowest setting. Well, I hope you can see into here, okay? Um, I've been trying to break down the sticks of butter, chop them up a little bit with my spoon. I've only had the butter on the stove top for about 10 minutes so far and it is melting down nicely. And if you go to the store and try to buy a jar of ghee, like I said, I'm doing these in half pint jars, so it's gonna be eight ounces. An eight ounce container jar of ghee at the store can cost you anywhere from, say, $7 up to $12, depending. So that's another good reason to make your own ghee. Now, you don't have to do 
an astronomical amount, like I like to do all the time, you can do a single one pound of butter and turn it into ghee. You're just going to do the same process I'm doing, but yours is going to go a lot quicker because you've only got one pound to melt down in comparison to I have 27 pounds in here. All right, I'm going to keep stirring this up right now until we get to our next step. Can you see the white foam that's just slightly starting on the top here? Um, it is starting to separate. I can stir the bottom right now if I want, but in a short bit, I'm no longer going to be scraping the bottom at all. And um, I also turned on the oven. I have it set at 225 degrees Fahrenheit, and my jars are in there right now, sterilizing and drying so that they're going to be ready for when I jar this up. Take your time doing this. There's no rush because, like I said, you don't want to burn it. Can you see how gold the butter's turning already? As I'm moving the... Those are actually some milk solids that are coming to the top. But it's still really opaque. What we are going to be looking for is it turning a beautiful gold, but it's going to be transparent. You can see it's starting to boil right now. Do not stir the bottom. And can you see the milk solids in here? Okay, being it's at a boil like this, I need to turn my heat down. Look at how it's sticking on there. I need to turn my heat down now on low. All right, so I've got it on the lowest possible, and I'm going to start skimming off some of the milk solids that are on the top here. Okay, as you can see right in this area here, it is bubbling up. Um, a lot of the milk solids are falling to the bottom of the pot right now. That's why I said you want to make sure that you do not scrape the bottom or you're going to be scraping those up. And the temp is on low. And this process is going to take a little bit of time. And the foam that's on the top is also milk solid. And some of this is actually going to cook down and will drop to the bottom. All right, it has taken a considerable amount of time. And I can kind of see through on the sides that it is clearing up really well. Um, generally, you can see the bottom and all of the milk solids down there at the bottom of the pot. But I'm thinking being I have so much butter in here, so much ghee, that it's kind of hard to see down that far. I have been scraping off um, the milk solids that are on the top here. It's been on the heat on low for quite a while, but I think we're just about to the point where I can start straining it. All right, being I started with 27 pounds of butter, um, I realized that a lot of it has evaporated and I've, I've skimmed off a lot of the milk solids that were on the surface here. All this white stuff, um, I'm not gonna keep trying to skim that because I'm actually going to filter this through cheesecloth, but it still kind of weighs a lot. So I don't know that I'm going to be able to make it over to the table or not. And I may have to filter it right next to the stove top. All right, I did manage to get my large stock pot of the ghee off of the stove top. And now what I'm going to do is strain it. So I have got um, a fine strainer here, fine sip strainer. And I'm just going to put it into another stock pot here, but I'm lining it with cheesecloth. And that is going to help so I don't have any solids going in there because I didn't completely scrape this off. Now, as you can see, the solids are clinging to the side of my jar here. Oh, that is beautiful. Now, as long as this is hot and my jars are hot, when I put the canning lids on top of them, um, it'll cause a natural vacuum and they'll seal. Like I said, this doesn't have to be canned because it is pure fat. It needs to be sealed in an airtight container. I'm gonna continue running this through the cheesecloth to filter it. And when I'm finished with this and I'm ready to jar it up, I'll get right back to you.
you see the milk solids in the bottom of the pot there um, that are actually stuck to the bottom of the pot. So when I dump this in here, a lot of the milk solids that are loose on the bottom um, are in the cheesecloth right now and now it's slowed down the filtration process. So you do not want to take a spoon and try to work your way through. You're just going to let it go through naturally. In fact, I may get another small container and more cheesecloth and dump the rest through that so that I can start jarring this up. All right. I am going to start putting my ghee into my jars and they are hot. I had to put my glasses on so I could see how much it was pouring in. I guess I'm leaving about uh, a half an inch head space. You see why I call this liquid gold? All right, I am going to wipe down the rims with vinegar. I'm actually using my kombucha vinegar and um, because I wanna make sure the tops aren't greasy at all when I put the lids on. Now these are brand new jars that I had just opened up the cases and I'm going to be using the metal flats that came along with them, but I did wash and dry these already. But Ball and Kerr say that you don't have to um, heat up your lids any longer. And I'm gonna set these over on a little cooling pad so that they can cool down. But this is what our liquid gold looks like. This is ghee. And the jars are very hot. So I'm gonna continue. Um, I'm going to put the lids and the bands on these and I'll set them aside. I still have a lot in here. I'm gonna take my next load of jars out of the oven and I'll get those filled. If I need to put more in, I do have jars that are washed already. I can stick those in the oven for a while yet, but that's what I'm gonna be doing right now. And then I'll come back and I'll show you at the very end when they're all set up. All right, here's my liquid gold. It's starting to set up already. Um, I've got jars pinging and a singing, which I like to hear. Um, they're sealing up on me. And like I said, it's just because the jars and the ghee were hot, um, it is causing a vacuum. Um, it's not necessary, but it's nice to have them sealed that way. Um, so there you go. Now I showed you how to make ghee. It was easy to do. And like I said, this has an indefinite shelf life. So it's an excellent thing to keep in your pantry. Plus, you can use it in so many different ways. Every way you use butter, you can use ghee. So if you happen to enjoy this video, please consider subscribing, hit that notification bell, share, and give me a thumbs up. And if you have any comments or questions on this, please leave it below. So until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day. God bless. Now I have a boatload of dishes to wash. <laughs> I better get to it. See you next time.